Now then, five games gone in the Premier League. Massive one this weekend. Chelsea versus Man City. Chelsea top of the league at the moment, unbeaten alongside Liverpool and Man United. Mickey Gray uh, is alongside me. Man City are just title favourites at the moment at 15 to 8. Chelsea 2 to 1. Liverpool 7 to 2. Man United 5 to 1. Obviously, if Chelsea win on Saturday, We've got new title favourites. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they've impressed me out of everybody I've seen so far this season, Mark. Um, Liverpool look very strong, but I think the organisation of Chelsea and that signature of Lukaku just kind of took them to another level. Being so impressed with them, not just defensively, but I think offensively as well. And it's all about the money that you spend in the summer, the players that you bring in. And I think that's the big question mark over Man City. Although they, you know, they're champions at the moment, um, they've played some very good games this season. I thought it was there for everybody to see against Southampton of the importance of bringing in that centre forward. They haven't done it yet. And I think even if they bring it in January, it might just be a little bit too late for them. People talk about Pep Guardiola being this amazing coach, which he clearly is. Mm. I'm not going to knock him mm. in any way whatsoever. But two years ago, it was quite clear he needed a centre-back. Mm. This year, it's quite clear he needed a striker. So yeah. has he not been backed behind the scenes or did he put all their eggs in a Harry Kane basket? Well, it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? I mean, look, you, if you go out and you spend £100 million on Jack Grealish, um, we all thought he was a fantastic signing. He's had a really good start to his, his, his Manchester City career. But when you think about the individuals and Harry Kane, who you just mentioned there before, who was available, if they wanted to go out and spend the £150 million, if that's what it was going to take to bring him in, you needed to replace Sergio Aguero. Learn from your mistake of the Champions League final where everybody said you needed a centre-forward. They didn't. They went through the season. They went unbeaten for about 20-odd games, which was fantastic. But I just think this time around, Liverpool were always going to be stronger with the, the players who have been injured who were coming back into the start. Uh, the, the Chelsea signing in Lukaku and how good they look. Manchester United have made signings. It's such a brilliant Premier League season. And I think if you stand still, you get caught out. And that might be Man City's downfall. How do you see Saturday's game then, 12-30? I, I, well, I mean, they've won the last three, uh, Chelsea or Man City. I think tactically, and this is saying something, I think tactically Tuchel is a little bit better than Pep Guardiola. I think really? Pep puts, yeah, absolutely. And I think it showed in the Champions League final, the changes, that holder midfield player that Pep didn't play, he needed to play him. He brought Sterling into that start 11. It didn't work out for them. And I think Chelsea got it right on the night, which they have done for the last three games they played against them. And I think he'll do exactly the same thing again. They've, they're onto something, Chelsea. Um, I see them as winning the title at the end of the season. I don't see anybody better. Liverpool, for me, will run them closest. Um, but I just think from back to front, they look the real deal. Uh, the sign of Lukaku, but 15 clean sheets under Tuchel. More than any other side. Unbelievable. And that's just organisation. It's a manager um, passing on the information through the week in training and saying, this is the way I want you to play. But, I mean, Thiago... Everybody thought it was a strange decision bringing him in at the age he was. I mean, he played at the weekend. Absolutely. Class. Rolls-Royce. You talk about Van Dijk being a Rolls-Royce. He's just in, in the middle of Christensen and Rudiger, and he just looks absolutely outstanding. And that's at the back. And if you can't score against them, their firepower is just sensational. It makes the change at the weekend, brings Kante on, takes Mount off at half-time. I don't think any other manager's doing that. Mount's a super player, but he saw that something wasn't right. He made that change. Kante comes on. Yes, it was a deflected goal, but it changed that game against Tottenham. They've had a tough start, and the way they've started the season has been first class. Two questions, then. So, Lukaku has clearly improved while in Italy, hasn't he? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, two seasons in Italy. Um, you can see he's, he looks as if he's slimmed down as well. He's, his hold-up play has got a little bit better. Still question mark at times, but what a powerhouse. Always going to score goals. There's always a question mark, you know, is he good for team morale? I see him sometimes waving his arms around. He's just frustrated because he doesn't score goals. Didn't score a goal against Tottenham. That's why he gets frustrated because the chances for there, for, were there for him to score goals. Um, but I think he's a top-class uh, striker. Score prediction then for Chelsea City? Uh, well, I think Man City will cause them problems, as they do with every team. But uh, how do you break this back line down at Chelsea? I think Chelsea will score two goals. I think I'm going 2-0. I think it's going to be hard for City to break them down. 2-0. Um, very quickly, City, Chelsea away, Paris Saint-Germain away, then Liverpool away. So big seven days for Pep Guardiola, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, massive. I mean, the importance of Kevin De Bruyne has now got himself back in the starting fray. Phil Foden as well, so yeah. that, that's a bit of a boost for him. Yeah, all scored midweek as well in the League Cup. So, Absolutely. yeah, huge boost. Right, also at 12.30 is uh, 
Man United versus Aston Villa. And this is a 12.30 kickoff because the Cortinas are playing at uh, Emirates Old Trafford. So the police have asked them to yeah. do an early kickoff. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we both know you're not 19 forever, are you, uh, Mickey? But uh, I love the Cortinas. But <laughs> United at home against Villa. They've got this new man in town, the return of Ronaldo, mm. and he just seems to have lifted the whole club, four in three. Oh, I mean... He gave everybody a boost. Um, we saw his debut against Newcastle, the atmosphere at that stadium, and that ain't going away. Um, they're all excited to have their, their hero back, if you like. One of, and still, one of the best players we've ever seen and one of the best, best players in the world. I mean, he, he's just, he makes goals himself. I mean, you just look at his movement. He's still got that energy of a 19-year-old, as you just mentioned there before. I mean, what a player. But everybody seems to be working around him as well. He's not going to get Ronaldo helping out in his own 18-yard box. He is what he is. Um, and what he's brought to them is, you think of Man United now as title contenders. Do you um, know, really? Yeah, I think you've got to. I mean, I said there earlier, I think Chelsea and Liverpool, for me, look the strongest. But then you've got Man City and Man United just behind them. But I would certainly say Man United, if they get on a good run, and with him up front, and the way he likes to win things, then they, they'll go very, very close. I think the big difference for Man United is they've got a poacher now as well. Mm. I mean, if you look at some of Ronaldo's goals since returning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he, just got that instinct, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just alive in the box. And I think other centre forwards can maybe take a leaf out of his book. I mean, you see, you know, he, the goalkeeper makes a save, but he's, he's not willing to just watch his shot. He, he chases it in. It's a little two yard finish. You saw his goal against Newcastle, his first one from two yards out as well. That's what he's about now. He's not this guy who's going to do 25 step overs and run past six or seven players. He's adapted his game with his age. He looks after himself, as we know. And what a signing he's been for Manchester United. Um, it's brilliant. And then, you know, you look behind him as well. Fernandez. Pogba's had a really good start to his career as well. And I love Greenwood. He's one of my favourite players at the moment. He's going to have a sensational career a natural finisher, and the goals will keep coming for him as well. But um, Aston Villa, on the other hand as well, I mean, what, what a game for them against Everton at the weekend. Yeah, Brilliant performance. Yeah, I mean, what a cameo from, uh, from Leon Bailey. Comes on for 18 minutes, sets two up, scores one, and then goes off with a hamstring problem. I don't know if he's going to be OK for that game, but this game's an open game of football. It always is at Old Trafford. Man United look as if they've got back to winning ways there. You can see goals. Dean Smith set up something there, and I'm really pleased to see what he's done. You know, with Danny Ings up front as well. I mean, he's a super player. They've got some really good, talented players, but you can't look away from Man United. Prediction time. Yeah, I think Aston Villa will score goals. I think Man United is still struggling to keep clean sheets, but the firepower that United have got, I'm going to go three-one. Three-one, Man United. Right, let's move to their three o'clock kickoffs. Uh, I was talking about Everton last week being unbeaten. Well. Since last week, that defeat to Villa and lost on penalties to QPR midweek in the uh, League Cup. But uh, I don't know. What do you make of Norwich? This is... Well, Norwich, I just think they're making the numbers up in the Premier League and I don't know why they're doing it, Mark. You know, they should have learned from two seasons ago. When you come up, you've got to make changes and if things aren't right in and certain it's the same positions, manager, isn't it? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which I respect. You know, he goes to the Championship. They had a great Championship season, but... Do you want to be a Premier League side or do you want to be a Championship side who just runs through the league, gets promoted and then wins about four or five games in the Premier League? I don't think the Norwich supporters want that. Sometimes you've got to take a risk. Well-run football club, but go out and spend the 60, 70, 80 million quid that you've got to on centre-halves. A holder midfield player, you know, who's got that, that presence about him and a centre-forward, not just Pookie, somebody else who you know is going to get them goals for you. And have a, have a go at the Premier League, like Brentford. Brentford have been a revelation in the Premier League so far. The way they take, take teams on in the Premier League, not fearful of anybody. Every time I see Norwich play, I, I, I think you're going to concede goals and I don't know where your chances are going to come from. And, and it's a big worry for me that this season could be a long, long season for them because everybody's touting them now and rightly so of relegation material so already. So Everton to get back on track? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Cavill, Lewin and Richarlison will be a miss for them. But yeah, I think Rafa will win this one. I think this is an interesting one at three o'clock. Leeds versus West Ham. Uh, Mikel Antonio will be back for uh, West Ham after his suspension. Uh, Leeds yet to win a game. Uh, drawn against Burnley, Everton and Newcastle. Yeah, it's been a difficult start for them. I don't think anybody saw that coming when you've got Bamford up front and Rafinha. James and Bamford, um, the three guys up front well, with a lot of pace. Bags of chances. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think at home, with that support... I mean, this is a fiery game. You think about West Ham supporters going to Welland Road as well. It's a game I'd actually like to go and watch. But um, 
I think that start is, is about to change for Leeds. Although West Ham, I think, have been excellent this season so far under David Moyes. Antonio is obviously a big boost coming back into that starting eleven. But I think all the games that they've got coming up, Manchester United back-to-back, -back, obviously, and then this one against Leeds, I think this is Leeds' time. So first three points for Leeds this season then? Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think it's going to be a brilliant game and I've been impressed with West Ham, but I'm just going to stick my neck out. I think Leeds can win this one, the first one of the season. At Leicester, Burnley. Burnley still looking for their first win. They've got that draw at home against the Leeds. And Leicester not quite going to plan, or have they overperformed last year? No, I, uh, I covered the, uh, the Leicester Man City game, and I, and I actually liked the way that Brennan set up, because possession-wise, you're never going to beat Man City. So they sat back, they tried to catch them on the break. They had a couple of chances in that game. And I actually interviewed Brendan at the end of the game and he was pretty pleased with the performance and maybe a little bit disappointed with the, with the result or the outcome. But when you look at the chances that Man City created in that game, it was, it was I think it was in its 20s. That's something that they've got to sort out. I mean, Vestergaard's come into the bat line. Um, Soyun Chu, I like as a parent. Um, you just wonder what kind of season it's going to be for Leicester because when you think about out, outside of the top four, I always look at Leicester now. Is that 15? But if you keep losing football matches, the confidence starts to seep out of your team. They've got talented players. Vardy's always going to get goals throughout the whole of the season. And I just think this might be a little bit of a step too far for Burnley. I still like, I still love what Sean Dyche has done there, but they've had some struggles at the beginning of the season over the last couple now, and um, I worry for them a little bit. Score then? Yeah, Leicester, I think they'll get goals. I'm going to go 2-0. Uh, Watford, Newcastle. Well, this one, I mean, Watford are a home team for me. Um, although that brilliant result against Norwich, I think you look at the way they perform up front. I look at Dennis, who I've been really impressed with. Cisco's brought something to the Premier League that I like. Saar, why he's been playing the Championship last season, I do not know. He's a talent. He's got pace. He's got goals in him. He's a threat when he goes on the outside. His assists are fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be an up and down season for Watford. I think they're going to win two or three, then they can lose two or three. Newcastle, on the other hand, the problems are not going to go away while this chairman is there. But as long as they stay in the Premier League, Mark, he's not going to worry about anything because the club's making money, he's making money. All the fingers are pointed to Steve Bruce, who I really feel for. I've got to be completely honest with you. But when they haven't got top players like Callum Wilson in the starting eleven, I think they've got big problems. They rely on St Maximin too much, who is a, he's who a, is great, a player. super great to talent. Watch, oh, you, you, you pay to go and watch people like that. And uh, what a talent. How long he can stay at Newcastle for, I don't know, because there's got to be the top sides, not just in the Premier League. I think around Europe, we'll be looking at him because he's a special player. But again, I worry about them playing away from home and the way that Steve will set up. I think Watford have got too much for them. Score then? Um, I think there'll be goals. I think Newcastle can get themselves on the score sheet. But I think Watford have got enough and I think they'll win it 2-1. I'm looking forward to this, 5.30. Brentford versus Liverpool. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, this one, because... Brentford, I think, at home with a, with a crowd. We obviously saw them in that Arsenal game, which was a night game, first time in the Premier League. It was always going to be a special occasion for them. Um, so I've been so impressed with them. Tony and Bueno, Henry and Canos just behind them as well. I think they've got a good outfit, the good energy about them, close you down. But they're coming up against a side who are probably better at doing that in Liverpool. Um, I saw them at the weekend against Crystal Palace. When they lose the ball, it's so impressive. Three or four players just closing everybody down, making it hard for you to play those little balls around the corner. They shut Zaha out. And I think um, Jurgen Klopp is certainly up for the challenge of the Premier League this season. So, I think, although I think Brentford have started and had a brilliant start to the season, I think Liverpool look too strong. Score? Yeah, I think Liverpool will get goals. I think Brentford will also, but um, I can see Liverpool getting three. So, let's say 3-1. 3 1. I tell you what, Salah has got a brilliant record in uh, London. The Egyptians netted six in his last five visits to the capital. So have a look at Mo Salah. It's a scorny time on the first goal. Right, let's move to Sunday, two o'clock. Southampton Wolves. Great result for Southampton at Man City last week. Absolutely brilliant. Could have actually picked up all three points. Because in my eyes, I thought it was a penalty. Uh, Adam Armstrong goes to, goes to ground. I mean, uh, I thought Hasselhoot will. He dealt with it really well at the end of the game, saying, look, the decision's been made. I can't do anything about it now. You could obviously sense the frustration in him, but when you shut Man City out for that long and then you start to create chances yourselves, um, I was really impressed with Southampton, the way they set themselves up. And that was down to the manager having a week to work on that play against Man City. So they'll, have, they'll take a little bit of confidence out of that game. But they're playing against a team who, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, is played really well, 
but just can't get over the line in Wolves. Super football, I thought the, the performance, if I go back, what, a week and a half, two weeks against Manchester United, was absolutely top draw, but they're obviously lacking in confidence in Jimenez up front. Um, he just can't put the ball in the back of the net. He had some great chances last time out against Brentford, but I do still worry about him when he's heading the ball. He took his head guard off at a certain time in that game, and you're just thinking to yourself, was that the right thing to do? But Traore has now got to start finding that confidence in front of goal because when he gets to the final thirds with ease, with the pace he's got, he just takes players on, he's a breath of fresh air, but when he gets into that final third, something's missing, and it's a big problem for them, because Trincao on the right-hand side looks a talented player. Don't really worry about them too much in saying that and conceding goals. They did it against uh, Brentford, obviously. But I think they could pick up their first win in this game, Wolves. I really do. Um, it's all about you know just trying to galvanise everybody, get everybody together and say, right, let's get the first win on the board. And then we can start moving up the table. Impressive last week from Southampton, but um, I think Wolves, my old club, I think they can win this one. Sure. Tight game, 1-0. Uh, 4.30. Really looking forward to this on Sunday. Arsenal versus Spurs. Now, I suppose if we're previewing this two weeks ago, it'd be very, very different. Yeah. But uh, Arsenal going to this on two wins. Spurs going to this on two defeats. Yeah, it's a strange one to call, actually, this one, isn't it? I think... Um, Everybody will probably look from the outside and obviously, I mean, we're in Betfred right now. So you look at Harry Kane, who's the top scorer in this, in this game against Arsenal. So you can't hide away from that record. But then you look at the former Tottenham. You look at the former Harry Kane over the last three they weeks. They look lacklustre against they Chelsea, do. I thought. They do. Um, I, I've said, I think the next couple of seasons are going to be a real struggle for Spurs. Although I think they've, you know, they've brought in a couple of players. I don't think they're the right type of players that Tottenham need. They, they, they're in a building process. Um, but then you look at Son, you look at Harry Kane. Now, Lucas Moura, for me, I think had a decent start to the season. Arsenal's performances were really poor then. They've gone back to back 1-0. So Arteta's probably looked at it. I mean, the, I looked at Party who played in the last game and he just sat in front of the back line. And I thought it was a master stroke from Arteta because he knows that they can't concede goals. Certainly at home because once them, them, them supporters get on their back, it's a real worry for them. And I think Arteta knows that. So putting party in front of the bat line yeah. was a great and move for And two 1-0 wins. Absolutely, yeah. It's the old Arsenal, yes. wasn't it? So Let's we win remember, the game growing up. Exactly, yeah. And um, I put them as favourites. Slight favourites in this game, I think. When it comes to the end of the season, you're probably looking at Tottenham finishing higher than Arsenal. But I just think the way things have gone over the last couple of weeks... Again, I, th I, I wouldn't go further than a 1 0 win mark, but I, I think it'll be so an Arsenal. So 1 0 to the Arsenal? Yeah, I've got to. Uh, Harry Kane is the uh, top scorer in this uh, fixture with 11. So could Harry Kane ruin uh, Mickey's prediction? Right, <laughs> Monday night, Palace versus Brighton. This is a huge game between these two sides. What a start. What a start it's been for Brighton in the, in the Premier League season this yeah. time around under Graham Potter. Um, been really impressed with him. I always question Mopai, but he had a good start to last season. He'll get to double figures, or maybe around about 15 goals a season. If he can keep scoring, then absolutely fantastic for them. But um, Cucurella, who came in, I thought had a, a great performance at the weekend. Um, he's been a kind of a surprise package, but worth it. The ethics never been a problem for Brighton. And Graham Potter was a wanted man. In the summer, I think there was talk about him going to Tottenham. So, you know, kudos to them for keeping him there. And things are paying off for them at the moment. I did Liverpool Crystal Palace at the weekend. And if you shut Zaha out, you've got a real chance of beating Crystal Palace. They're playing a different style of football. And when it comes to set pieces, I mean, they conceded three from second phase. So you will see Brighton, every time they get a wide free kick or a corner, they'll put it into an area and they've got to stay switched on. If they don't switch on, then that's where Brighton will catch them. They'll catch them out. And I think the form that we've seen from the, at the beginning of the season, what they're in fourth position at the yeah, moment, 12 points, a brilliant yeah. start from them. I see it continuing. I don't see Crystal Palace getting anything from this game. So score then? Uh, I think they'll score Crystal Palace, but I, I'm going to go with Brighton. I think they'll win this 1-2-1. Uh, right, Mickey, what's your best bet of the weekend? Well, I haven't gone for uh, the obvious. Um, I think Chelsea against Man City was my first one. I obviously went with Chelsea. I think they're going to continue that vein of form and make a four wins out of four against Man City. I've gone for Leeds. I think it's their time to get their first win of the season. Tough one to call that against West Ham, who've had a brilliant start themselves. And I've also gone for Brighton, as we've just spoke about there. I think they can get the job done against Crystal Palace. And as we record this, that is 18 to 1. Right, cheers, Mickey. Look, please, if you're having a bet this weekend, enjoy the football, but please gamble responsibly and keep it fun. It's what we're all about. And be lucky.